<laughs> These guys are funny. Professor. Ach, guten Himmel, don't scare me like that, sir. Uh, I apologize, but I needed to call you regarding our little experiment. How are the subjects faring? Well, sir, I'm afraid out of the original 40 you sent me, only two remain. The rest are all dead. Oh my, how did it happen? Well, brain hemorrhages and aneurysms mostly. Oh, and there was that one fellow who spontaneously combusted. My heavens, these movies may be worse than I originally thought. So who do we have left? Uh, let me see here. The animation student and that one slightly crazy Japanese fellow. Well, Professor, do you think it wise to continue? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not the numbers. It's the quality of the results I'm interested in. These two are perfect test subjects. Oh, speaking of which, I need to contact him, so I'll have to bid you good day, Mr. Kelly. Very well, Professor. At your discretion. Please keep me informed of any further developments. Mr. Toon? Are you there? Oh, hey, Professor. Uh, just a thing, I'll be right with you. I gotta say, you got me some fairly fancy digs here, sir. I mean, food, supplies, whatever I need. But, uh, why can't I get out? I mean, there's no other doors in here except for the ones to the kitchen, my bedroom, and the projection room. Yeah, yeah, well, due to the nature of your internship, you and a few others are here to give your insight to the movies I will show you. But I need you to each be isolated. So the results are not tainted by outside influences. But I have access to the internet. Scheiße, I forgot about that. Uh, well, I meant no direct contact. Okay, whatever, dude. So what do you got for me this time? Oh, yeah, my assistant should be on his way down with the tape. It should be deposited in your unit's box shortly. Mr. Rossi dreams. Two hours later. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember this one now. Okay, let's review this thing. Jack, 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 Senor Rossi. Senor Rossi, Mr. Rossi. Senor Rossi, Hi Rossi. Senor Rossi, Jack, Jack. Mr. Rossi is a cartoon character created by Italian animator Bruno Bazzetto, known throughout Italy as somewhat of a political satirist. Bazzetto's animation style is usually simple but effective, reminiscent of old limited animation cartoons like Rocky and Bullwinkle, employing things like simple character designs, repetitive animation cycles, and brightly colored, watercolored backgrounds. But his works have evolved throughout the years, leaning more towards the experimental and even won him some awards. He created the character of Rossi in the 1960s as sort of an everyman character, epitomizing the typical day-to-day -day problems of a working class man in Italy, and the various means by which he tries to escape the doldrums of his life. In the 70s, the character gained more of a fan following, so Bazzetto decided to switch from a short film format to feature length. A few American English language localizations were reproduced in the 80s as Mr. Rossi's Dreams, Mr. Rossi's Vacation, and Mr. Rossi Looks for Happiness. This film, Mr. Rossi's Dreams, is really less of a movie and is actually a series of seven smaller vignette shorts tied together by one large, loose plotline. Kind of like a clip show. These shorts have Mr. Rossi daydreaming, or rather becoming so involved in his daydreams that he actually seems to slip into a delusional, hallucinogenic state and only comes to once the daydream stops, leaving him bewildered and confused. Hmm? Harold, what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm doing the dishes. This is another story about a boy and his dog. Whoa, ass ahoy. Actually, there's a surprising number of similarities between this and Seth MacFarlane's prototype family guy, Larry and Steve. Lovable doddering idiot? Check. Brown talking dog that counteracts his absent-mindedness? Check. Wacky animated antics? Check. Cutaways to bad jokes? Check. Yes, yeah, Seth MacFarlane, one of the most creative and original producers in the field of animation today. <coughs> oh, Reginald! I 
disagree! Anyway, Rossi and his dog Gastone, or Harold as he's called in this film, share a small apartment in the city. And while Rossi has a 9-to-5 job in the city, Harold plays Susie Homemaker. Today, though, it's the weekend, and Rossi and Harold are gonna have some fun. It starts with the duo going to see the latest film at the Cineplex. Oh, great. Another remake of Tarzan. Oh, no, wait. Excuse me. Zarzan. An inconsiderate patron sits next to them, starts smoking cigars, and hitting them with peanuts. But poor, meek Rossi is just too timid to argue with the extremely large gentleman. He instead imagines himself as Zarzan, king of the jungle, who drives the fastest vine around. And apparently, there's traffic in the jungle as well. And this is where Rossi gains a bit of unwarranted notoriety. Rossi cartoons are mostly nonsensical, musical, and very colorful. And it was apparently really popular with the stoner community in the 70s. Turns out there's a poacher in the jungle, but he's trading animals their valuable parts for stripy pants. Uh oh Somebody's fabulous! By the time they track him down, Rossi is ready to give him what for. And reality comes back and rears its ugly beard at him. Rossi missed the whole movie. And Harold thinks Rossi might be overstressed after being beat up by the large brute. They instead go home. Harold tells Rossi to relax and watch some TV instead. Some news footage of a space shuttle launch instead triggers Rossi's condition, and he now imagines himself and Harold as astronauts. Let's hear it for these dauntless explorers who face the unknown with such courage! Hooray! Rossi has snuck some whiskey aboard for the long flight, and they accidentally get the computer... Uh, drunk. This throws off the guidance system and forces them to crash land on the planet Happy Tune. The nicest planet in the universe. The nicest planet? That's right. The natives are so nice, they greet all visitors by taking on their looks, their language, and their customs in order to make them feel at home. Wonderful. Let's go ask them for some rocks then. Good idea, Harold. Let's go. How are you? I love how Rossi can survive in the vacuum of space with only a clothespin on his nose. Yep, no sudden decompression here. They confuse the inhabitants at first, but eventually make quick friends and collect some rock samples. Once again, the madness has overtaken Rossi, and he wakes up in the garbage cans outside. Segment 3 starts when Harold complains about the milkman. He never gives me so much as a nod when he brings the milk in the mornings, but he's always got time for the neighbors, oh! Rossi, in the meantime, sits in bed reading a copy of Sherlock Holmes. I think we all know where this is headed. Trust me, I'm a professional. But beneath this pillow lies the key to my release. <laughs> yeah, don't I wish I was watching that movie instead. The scene changes, and the two have now become Holmes and Watson, gallivanting through the streets of London in search of the murderous milkman. I am the milkman. My milk is delicious. Special delivery today! <laughs> They happen across some singing cats. Meow, meow. Meow, meow. Meow, meow. Meow, And crap like I've never seen. Yeah, there aren't enough words in the English language to explain the amount of insanity and in WTF I'm looking at right now. And 
this goes on for like two minutes. And then we get back to the two detectives looking for the murderous milkman who's been putting poison into the people's milk in the sewers. Whoa, getting some deja vu from my last review there. They come to the basement of a mansion and do a murder mystery roundabout to find out the milkman's poison has been giving people giant ears because he has a giant nose. No, that's not phallic at all. And just as Rossi gives chase after the fleeing villain, the cold weather snaps him back to his senses. That's three for three. I think he's going to need some serious psychiatric help. Harold has had enough of Rossi's shenanigans and storms out to cool off for a bit, only to be caught by the local dog catcher, Pedro. Now Rossi is Zorro. Okay, whatever, let's run with that. The captured dogs sing about being captured and tormented by Pedro. Poorly. It's not even singing. It usually ends up sounding like it's just being read off the page and not sung to the music. He treats us like dogs. I'm all skin and bones now. He treats us like dogs. I'm one tired bow wow. He treats us like dogs. I'm hard under the collar. He treats us like dogs. But too weak to holler. Just like dogs. He's me. He feasts while we starve. It's not fair. He eats the covered bear. He doesn't leave a scrap and then he takes a nap. We don't even get the bone. There's nothing lovely as a tree. I know that's true, at least for me. When Pedro caught me, I was busy. He moved so fast it made me dizzy. <laughs> Zoro Rossi and Pedro fight, taking a page from the Termite Terrace Boys, using bigger and bigger weapons. Then Zoro Rossi shaves his face at Pedro and traps him in a giant bubble, beating him, I guess. Topped off with some bad puns by Harold. Hooray for Zoro! It was a close shave, but justice triumphs again! Puns so bad that they wake Rossi up again. Next up is a dream about being a famous movie star, like his next door neighbor. Well, if I were a famous actor, I'd fly all over the world in my private jet. I'd have girlfriends in every country. Oh, I grand old time. Oh, I can see it all now. What a life. We arrive in Hollywood in two minutes. The runway is covered with devoted fans lying on their backs to soften your landing. We have to rush to the studio to sign eight or ten contracts. Hey, and... who is that nitwit? He's passing us. He's going to land on my fans. Uh-oh. Uh, bad news. That's Johnny Jingles. Eh? Johnny Jingles? The famous cowboy star? What's that bumpkin doing in my flight path? I forgot to tell you, he's, um, he's after those contracts too, boss. I love the planes fighting to see who gets to the audition first. Here they come now, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Two greatest superstars. Johnny Jingles and that Latin sensation, the great Rossi. They're here to fight it out over a series of blockbuster spy adventure movies. Which one of these stars will be the new 007 of the silver screen is anyone's guess. Hey, check it out. I think that guy might be Lemon Curry. Well, I'll be delighted. Whichever one passes the three secret agent tests we've set up. Gunfighting, shark swimming, and the giant finale of a towering inferno rescue. Of course, Rossi outacts the other guy, who looks and sounds a little like Elton John. <laughs> Rossi gets the part, of course, and stars in, I don't know, Down Periscope? But a cold shower and nearly drowning brings him back once again from spiraling into the brink of madness. Farewell, cruel world. Harold puts a worn out Rossi to bed, and the TV is playing some late night medieval movie. Now Rossi is Lancelot, and has to fight Merlin the Magician to rescue the princess. More psychedelics and music ensue with Merlin. Yes, I'm Merlin and my magic is rare. Just for fun, I'll let's a poof to a bear. Or a moose might be worth it. Or would you rather be a lion? Rossi fights Merlin and it reminds me a little bit of the wizard's battle from Sword in the Stone. Did you knock? Turns out Merlin has made a mistake and cloned the princess into several princesses. 
and Rossi has to kiss them all to find out which one is the real princess, which it turns out to be the one on the television. Rossi awakes on Sunday morning. The neighbor's dog is being mischievous and bullying Harold, so the two set up a trap to catch him. Wait a minute, this isn't a dream? Whoa, the madness is starting to cross over into reality. Uh-oh, it's like there's some kind of Silent Hill thing going on here. Oh, no, wait. Rossi's thinking he's Dr. Frankenstein now. They're going to make the evil dog into a nice dog. With science! But they end up turning him into a sheep instead. Ah, that's brilliant! These cartoons truly have much to teach us! The seventh and final segment comes while Rossi's doing a little bit of house cleaning. He rubs a lamp, and poof, Harold's a genie. Just like Aladdin. He wishes for a fly new ride. Huh? What am I supposed to do with a carpet? Anyway, I'd prefer wall to wall. <laughs> but this is a magic carpet. <laughs> And while flying, he accidentally drops a lamp into the marketplace, where it turns out they're selling other lamps with different genies. You know, let me stop the review here for just a second. It's bad enough having to watch the dub of this movie, but here it's especially bad. One pet peeve I have about localizations is when the translating company decides to take the liberty to change the script entirely. Now, I get that they have things like, you know, cultural differences, perhaps some stuff that's not safe for the kids, but to go and change the whole context is just wrong. For a genie, I make a great chauffeur. I can furnish whatever you'd go for. Fly, sail, or drive. On motion, I thrive. My master's the one thing I slow for. Our candy overplayed, our wishes are custom made, by now but don't be afraid, we are masters of our trade. It's a train wreck here. It sounds like somebody took far too many liberties with reinterpreting. Either that or they just ad-lib because they didn't have a script and were just being asked to make sense out of the mayhem they were watching on screen. Anyways, Sultan Ali has gotten hold of the lamp. Are you gonna love this guy? Prince Ali, fabulous he, Ali Ababwa. Man, Aladdin doesn't look good in his later years. I knew Disney was trying to cover something up. And Ali is holding Harold Ransom. Rossi saves him by acting as a fake fakir, or Harold saves Rossi, or something. Uh, it's mutual. To end off, Rossi thinks it'd be easier to stay home. Harold agrees with him swiftly and goes off to trade jobs with Rossi for the week. And you know, I think it's probably for the best. A man as delusional as Rossi is probably best kept far away from civilians. Rossi is everything a cartoon should really be. It's lively, bouncy, animated, fun, madcap, adventurous, and only sticking to a plot in as much to rein in the insanity. It doesn't have to make too much sense in the long run, just provide a catharsis or a character we can empathize with. I like Mr. Rossi, and I probably wouldn't mind giving the other films a good review if I could ever track down a copy. Unfortunately, it was only limited to a very small VHS release, or TV broadcast, and I don't think we'll be seeing a DVD anytime soon, at least not in the United States. Okay, Professor. That's another one down. What do you got for me next? My god, Nibble, he's actually enjoying this! <clears throat> um, yeah, okay, Mr. Toon. I've got plenty more cartoons for you, and I think the next one will be something you'll really enjoy. Be Just call me Rossi. Mm -hmm.